idea. The highlands, however, look completely different. There, it is misty and rainy for months on end. The sunflower trees grow here too, and they can turn into a real jungle. Heinke Jäger comes to the mountains of Santiago quite often to check on their development. All around, the bushes are teeming with Galapagos finches, who use their specialized beaks either to catch insects or gather seeds. These finches also evolve from a single immigrant pair into 15 distinct species. As they found many untapped resources on the islands, they adopted different professions that were not available to their mainland cousins. Whether the new species fed on hard grain or soft grubs, the type of diet soon expressed itself clearly in the shape and size of their beaks. But this paradise is deceptive. There is a particular reason why Heinke regularly visits this neck of the woods. Only a few meters away, the surroundings look completely different. Beyond the sturdy wire fence, the trees have disappeared entirely. Where there used to be forest, there is now a stretch of open land as far as the eye can see. The finches were not the only ones to lose their home. The tortoises too are having problems here. They're finding less and less food and hardly any shade. For cold-blooded reptiles in the tropics, shady trees are just as important as sunbathing. This is the work of another immigrant species. Goats have been stripping Santiago, as well as several other islands, of much of their plant life. From a handful of escaped animals, the goat population soon rose to 30 or 40,000, and they took their toll on the vegetation. Damage due to goats assumed such proportions that even larger trees died. In the Galapagos, the existence of many endemic species, meaning those that only live here, is now threatened. Land iguanas, relatives of the marine species, used to appear in great numbers on Santiago. The adults were shot Rats ate their eggs, dogs their offspring, goats took their food. Today they are extinct on Santiago. Should the same be allowed to happen to the many other species, from the tiny finches to the giant tortoises? To conservationists, the answer was clear. Something had to be done about it. A team of professional hunters was hired. Hunting dogs were flown in from New Zealand and specially trained. They set to work with state-of-the-art equipment. All the dogs are fitted with radio transmitters, so they can be easily traced if necessary. Otherwise, they could be lost in the difficult terrain and turn into yet another problem species. For more than a year, these men have been systematically combing the island acre by acre and the open regions were soon emptied. Today, the overgrown areas are the last refuge of the light-footed goats. Cornering them here requires above-average hunting skills. All hunters are in contact with each other via radio, each member following strict routes controlled via GPS. The distance between two hunters is kept constant at 10 meters, so that no goat can escape the line of beaters. The dogs corner the confused goat on a steep slope, from where it can see no escape. The goat is petrified by the dog's barking and makes no move to flee. While working, Hanka tries to avoid the area currently being hunted to minimize the risk of accident. She knows most of the hunters personally from her many tours, and during her research, she can confirm that large areas, now free of goats, 
have already recovered significantly. Hola, Freddy. ¿Cómo Hola. Estás? ¿Qué, ¿Qué tal? Bien. ¿Qué tal el día hoy en el campo? Ya un poco medio... Me he cansado, por lo que ya se toca andar bastante lejos para encontrar agua. Unos tiros como... Sí se nota aquí la diferencia, ¿no? Como toda la vegetación está mucho más alta como antes, entonces sí se ve que hay menos, menos chivos, ¿no? Claro, por supuesto que va a ser muy difícil de encontrar los chivos por la... Ya van a haber menos y va a cerrarse más la vegetación y sí. va a ser imposible la pasada. ¿no? Bueno, entonces les deseo mucho éxito en el campo okay. y nos vemos, ¿no? Más ok, bien. Yeah. Gracias. Gracias. Chao. 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 Every evening in the hunting lodge, there is roast goat for dinner, and the areas that have been cleared are carefully documented. The routes taken by the hunters are loaded into the computer as GPS data files, and then checked. This is the only conceivable way of freeing an island measuring 585 square kilometers of rugged terrain from goats. But how do you find the last few animals? And how can you be sure that they really are the last? Well, the best scouts for the job are goats. Each conspicuously marked and fitted with a radio transmitter, they are set loose in areas where there may still be a few isolated goats. The appropriately named Judas goats are meant to find other goats and hand them over to the hunters. The island is divided into dozens of blocks in which every shooting and every animal that gets away are carefully documented. It is this marriage of high-tech and traditional knowledge that leads to the success of this difficult assignment. And it works again this time. Goats are not happy on their own. After all, that's the reason why humans are able to keep them in herds. Humans brought the goats here as a source of food. In the meantime, however, attempts at settling most of the islands were abandoned and the farm animals were left to reproduce freely without ever being slaughtered. Now they are being culled again. Galapagos buzzards follow the hunters. They've learned that people with guns means food. Of course, the ram doesn't know this, but the eager bird of prey, closing in on his young companion, rouses his protective instincts. He has done his duty for the hunters. Most of the goat meat, built from the nutrients of the island, return to the ecosystem. The Galapagos buzzards are among the first to benefit. Their population in Santiago has risen significantly during the hunting operation. After a year of a considerably reduced goat population, there are already some signs of recovery for the flora. Now, in the rainy season, the herbal meadows in the uplands are once again half a meter high. But Santiago is only one of many islands in the Galapagos. Some of the others are even larger. Goats, stray cats and dogs are causing havoc there too, and alien seeds are introduced on a daily basis. So conservationists will be needed here for quite some time, and the Frankfurt Zoological Society is willing to remain actively involved.